What's going on guys, Tara number 9 here, and today I have some more footage from Gen Con 2024 Day 2. Thanks again to Code Dameron for providing this footage. His original footage only had player audio, but he agreed that I could re-record it with commentaries if the game was being cast. So, big shout out to him. There is a link to Code Dameron's channel in the video description below, as well as a link to the original broadcast that he did with the player audio. But without further ado, let's get into the commentary. This is going to be a matchup between George Hudson, an innovative deck builder, running his Hondo Blue build. And he's running against Nick Hansen on the right side of the screen here, who is playing Director Krennic with a 30 HP base. So... Both of these players are playing blue-green villainy with 30 HP bases. I'm a little surprised to see Nick on the 30 HP base because the uh, Krennic, Krennic green has traditionally run the energy conversion lab. But, you know, we're going to have to see what he's going to do with it. And uh, I believe both these players are undefeated at this stage. Uh, I I think that uh, the Co Dameron stream was selecting from undefeated players. So you know even if even if Nick is using an, an unusual base, it's been working out for him. All right, let's get right into it. So both of these are uh, green blue villain villain soft control decks, um, but George's deck uses Hondo, a leader that synergizes with Smuggle to generate substantial value and card advantage by smuggling things and giving out free XP. Whereas uh, Nick's Director Krennic gives him better recovery ability with the Restore Two once Krennic deploys, and also allows damaged units to grow in stats. So we see George. Uh, we see George. Uh, led off with the Pike Sentinel, which is a two-three, um, and Nick played uh, Nick played Doctor Pershing, a zero-five that can damage himself to draw a card. On the second turn, uh, George smuggled out a Collection Starhopper using Honda's ability to give a plus one plus one counter to the Pike Sentinel. Uh, Nick played a Power of the Dark Side, and George sacrificed the uh, Collection Starhopper. George swung his Pike Sentinel in against Dr. Pershing, dealing three damage thanks to the experience, and Nick used Pershing's ability to damage himself and draw a card. Uh, Pershing can give some substantial card advantage and is probably going to be quite relevant um, in this sort of in this sort of matchup where the game is likely to go long. So George uh, was focusing on trying to get him off the board early, I think. Um, and we see in the current uh, in the current state of things, um, I think George has the initiative here and will get the opportunity to remove Pershing one way or another before he draws another card. Um, now, taking that action to remove Pershing does give the opponent more time, but given that Krennic is going to deploy and do some restore, and this is likely going to be a longer game, I think it is probably correct. Uh, if George were playing Sabine or some other like substantially more aggressive build, I think in that sort of context it might make sense to ignore Pershing and just go for the base. But uh, as a since he is playing another blue-green villain control deck, I think that he doesn't want to allow Nick to have that card advantage. Nick uh, really vacillating over his research de uh, resource decision there. Um, but he does make his decision, and George immediately uh, leads off the turn, swinging in with the Pike Sentinel to defeat... Uh, to defeat Dr. Pershing, the Sentinel does take one damage thanks to Krennic's passive ability that gives plus one, plus one, uh, and uh, to damaged units. We then see a <laughs> Lieutenant Childson revealing three cards from Nick, followed by Lieutenant Childson revealing three cards from George. So Lieutenant Childson is a 2-2. Two -two. But uh, when you play him, you get to reveal uh, up to four blue cards. And for each one that you reveal, you get a plus one, plus one. Now, neither player was actually able to show the full four to get a 6-6 six, six Childson. But there are now two 5-5 five, five Childsons on the board. I do think that in Nick's hand, one of the cards we saw was a takedown, which he could play to defeat Childson immediately. And that's exactly right. Uh, takedown comes out next turn, defeats George's Lieutenant Childson because he only had 5 HP. I wonder if he had like a non-blue card in hand or what exactly it was, but he was not able to get to the full 6-6, six, six, which would make him, uh, make him immune to the takedown there, uh, as takedown only works on units with 5 HP or less. Super Commando Squad hits the field. This is a 4-4 with shielded, and while it has an upgrade, it gains Sentinel. 
Um, now, it's worth noting that because the Pike Sentinel is also a Sentinel, Nick can still choose which of these units to attack. And so he uses his copy of Lieutenant Childson to defeat the Pike Sentinel, taking... Now, that's quite odd. He should have taken three damage there on his Lieutenant Childson. Didn't do it at first, but it looks like he it looks like it looks like it was caught now. And then he's going to deploy Director Krennic, I believe. So Krennic is uh, is a two seven with restore two and has that same passive, giving plus one power to uh, damaged friendly units. And he uses Krennic to take out the Super Commando Squad's shield. Um, which means that it no longer has Sentinel. Now, George can just swing with the Super Commando Squad and eliminate Krennic if he wants to. Um, he could also swing with the Super Commando Squad and eliminate the more powerful Lieutenant Childson, who can otherwise actually swing for six this turn because he has three experience and a plus one power from Krennic's passive. Let's see what George opts to do here. He does have quite a few cards in hand, including an Overwhelming Barrage. So if you were to play the Overwhelming Barrage, he could do six total damage. That's what he's going for. And that is just enough. Three damage to each is going to wipe the board there. Uh, Overwhelming Barrage was a standout card in the Spark of Rebellion, you know, the the first set that we saw for the game. And it continues to be a uh, continues to be a standout card in our second set. Uh, a Vanquish hits the field and eliminates the buffed Super Commando Squad before it can swing for six. George deploys Hondo and swings in, dealing four damage to Nick's base. And I think that's the first time we've seen either base take damage this game. Both players fighting for control of the board. Now George is maybe in a spot of trouble here because a spark of a uh, I'm sorry a power of the dark side would eliminate Hondo immediately. Uh, there's also the possibility of an ambush, and here here's an ambush. We see uh, we see Darth Vader ambushing in for five damage, looking at the top ten cards, and if he can find a Death Trooper in his top cards, oh, there's the Death Trooper. So when played, Death Trooper deals two damage to a friendly unit and two damage to an enemy unit. So Vader hits Hondo for five, taking three in return, and then the Death Trooper that Vader found with his when played ability deals two damage to itself and two damage to Hondo as well. So Hondo is actually defeated in one hit. Lucky, uh, lucky top deck there to some degree with the Death Trooper, but he did get to look at his top ten cards, so he has a fair chance of digging to it, especially if he hasn't seen one yet and uh that death trooper does work very well does work very well with the uh D does work very well with vader so george ambushes in maul into vader killing vader but i think it, it, he also loses maul thanks to krennic's ability giving vader plus one power for being damaged i'm not sure that he knew that uh I'm I'm not sure if he knew that he was gonna take uh he was gonna lose Maul there or if he thought he was going to defeat Vader and, and leave Maul alive at one HP, which would have been a much better situation for him. Nick now does seem to have the advantage in this game, though it's not over yet. Let's see what George has. A um you know, Supreme Leader Snoke, for instance, would kill the Death Trooper and be a big problem for other units. The the main problem with that though is just that it could get removed by power of the dark side very easily. We see a make an opening that's going to clear the Death Trooper and and heal two damage from George's base. Uh, Nick plays the not so exciting Pike Sentinel. There's going to be a smuggled, ooh, okay, so smuggled heroic intervention, ambushing with the client, and the client is going to resolve. So you get to choose what order you resolve when played effects. So he chooses to resolve the ambush. Uh, he okay, so he chooses to he chooses to resolve Hondo's ability for the plus one plus one. Then he resolves the ambush, clearing the Pike Sentinel. Then he resolves shielded, putting his shield on after he's already taken the damage. So the client now a three six with a shield and two damage on it. Now the fact that he only has four HP left does leave him in range of uh, some effects. For instance, there's a Count Dooku in hand that would be able to kill the client through his shield. Um, but we'll have to see how that uh, how that pans out. Um, it's arguable that against blue, against blue, it's at least conceivably better to to just take the damage and uh, to take the damage on your shield and and stay as a three six because you'd be out of range of takedown and Dooku. Um, but it's hard to say for sure. Uh, having the shield is better for like normal unit combat interactions. In this case, though, Nick does have the Count Dooku to take that out. 
Uh, George uses a takedown to take out Count Dooku through his shield. So, you know, shields are not as effective against some of these blue cards as they are in certain other decks. Um, I don't know. I, I think Nick, uh, I think Nick then took the initiative and George smuggles out Lom Pike using Hondo's ability to give a plus one, plus one counter to him, uh, or rather an experience counter, which is plus one power, plus one HP experience token. And so George now with a board advantage over Nick, let's see how things go. It's hard for me to tell exactly how many resources they have here. Um, but I think George is maybe at nine resources, ten resources. He smuggled Lom Pike, which I think is five, and he had the um, he had a takedown earlier that turn, which is four. I think he has ten resources now, so I think he had nine last turn, and he's added another one this turn for ten total. Oh, Nick is at ten resources, and there is Devastator, ten resources to t and does ten damage. Lom Pike is off the board. George needs uh, needs something big to answer that Devastator because otherwise he's going to start taking damage very fast. Devastator is a 10-10. It has Sentinel, and when played, um, when played, it deals damage equal to the number of resources you control to an opposing unit. So the 10 damage there taking out the buffed Lom Pike easily, and now a 10-10 Sentinel in space is a big obstacle for George. He really wants to have like Power of the Dark Side here, but I don't think he has it. If he has it, it would be a very straightforward play. It looks like he's mulling over whether to play a Super Laser Blast just to kill that Devastator. Yeah, he goes for it. Super Laser Blast to kill Devastator, not efficient, but that is that unit is a big problem if left unchecked. So I don't think it's a crazy decision of, uh, for George by any means. Um, once again, a blank board. And George is a little ahead on damage on base. But um, we're looking at, I think it's five cards in hand there for Nick. And four or five for George. He's shuffling his cards, so I can't really tell. But it is worth noting that George probably has something of a card advantage thanks to Smuggle. A Hondo deck is likely going to run a large number of Smuggle cards to synergize with Hondo's leader ability. And as a result, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if several of George's resources were playable at this stage. And indeed, we see a... Uh, and indeed, we see a collection Starhopper smuggled out for three resources. Interestingly, it looks to me like George has not opted to use Hondo's ability here. Maybe maybe telegraphing that he has another smuggle card coming out later that he thinks is more important to use the ability on. Or maybe it's a bluff, or maybe he just forgot. It's hard to say. So that's going to be a 2-2. And now he's gonna now he's gonna smuggle out Lom Pike, and now he uses Hondo's ability. So in that situation, I think he was trying to get the the Star Hopper out early, and then save the buff for the more relevant Lom Pike. And in the event that his opponent has a Power of the Dark Side or something, it would just take out the weaker Star Hopper. Um, interesting, interesting sequencing there, and I think quite possibly a prudent a move from George. Um, let's see what happens next. It does look like Nick has a Darth Vader in hand, uh, as well as an overwhelming barrage and an entrenched, um, barrage doing nothing here because he doesn't have any cards on the field with that you can use for it. So it's an interesting case because overwhelming barrage is a very, very strong card, but you have to create a certain board state for it to be relevant. You re you want to have ideally a unit with high power to, uh, initiate that barrage, but it is going to be Darth Vader here that we see. Um, Vader coming in for the, uh, probably going to come in for the ambush on Lom Pike. Would only deal five damage, which would not be lethal. But if, if Nick can find another Death Trooper, he could potentially kill Lom Pike in one hit, uh, even um, even through the. Uh, even uh, through the buff. He doesn't have it, though. It's going to be a Pike Sentinel. Um, so Lom Pike stays on the field. And then we have the 2-3 the Pike Sentinel and the Darth Vader there. I think there's a good chance that we see George play Supreme Leader Snoke here. So by playing Supreme Leader Snoke, George would be able to kill his opponent's Vader immediately. He would also debuff the Pike Sentinel to a 0-1. And he would debuff any future units that we might see as well. Of course, there is a chance that uh, by playing such a powerful card and taking control of the board, Nick would be able to answer with a super laser blast of his own to wipe the board. Uh, but George is going to go for it. Let's see whether Nick has that super laser blast. 
So Supreme Leader Snoke is a 6-6 six, six and gives uh, non-leader enemy units minus 2, minus 2. So debuffs Vader to be to having 0 HP. Pike Sentinel is a 0-1. Uh, <laughs> Nick says 2 to base, but uh, it is denied, as George points out, his Supreme Leader Snoke's ability. And I think Nick uh, responded by just saying, okay, 0 to base, or something, or words to that effect. Uh Ooh, yeah. So Collection Starhopper swings in for two, and then the Super Laser Blast comes in, wiping the board completely. George still does have a few resources. Let's see if he can play a smaller unit to try and recover a bit from the Super Laser Blast here. Looks like he does. Let's see what he's playing. It's going to be a Lieutenant Childson. That's not bad at all. He reveals a power of the dark side, make an opening and vigilance. Oh, but Nick has a power of the dark side of his own, removing that Lieutenant Childson from play immediately. Man, these decks are, uh, you know, this is really a war of two control oriented decks, as we've seen from, you know, the, the amount of damage on the bases is not very high. And this game has been going for some time. You know, the players have, I, I don't even know how many resources they have. They might have like 12 or more. Um, yeah, it looks like 12 resources for Nick. George's sleeves are a little harder to distinguish from each other. It looks like another smuggled Lom Pike. Is that? I think that's the third copy of Lom Pike. Um, and Doctor Pershing comes out from uh, Doctor Pershing comes out from Nick. So actually, quite relevant at this stage because of the potential card advantage that he represents. Um, let's see what George has. Uh, let's see what George has to offer. And I think he's looking through his resources here. Um. I think that's the what is this card called? Is it the is it the Vigilant Pursuit Craft? Is that what it's called? Um, not the it's a Space Sentinel with Smuggle, and it's not very efficient, but it is a unit. Ooh, and Nick going for the mill, so he plays a Vigilance and decides to heal five and mill six, and we do see a copy of Maul among the milled cards there. Um. Traditionally, in the Spark of Rebellion meta, we saw some of these control mirrors ending in these crazy sequences where, especially with the harder control decks like the Aiden Red, Aiden Double Blue, Vader Blue, we would see these sequences where people would repeatedly use Vigilance to mill their opponent and play Restock to recover their own Vigilance and so on. Um, I'm not sure if that's the end game that we're going to see here. Right now, George has a major advantage on board, but Nick may be trying to resolve things via the um, via the milling option, or he might just not have a very good hand. You know, it'll be interesting to see. It looks like he has at least one other. I think he has all three of his copies of Vigilance now, though. I think the other two copies are there in hand. So I I think jo I think Nick might just be going for the Mega Mill end game. Healing to full and milling another six cards. Oh man, George, I think, only has one card left in deck. I think George is gonna mill out here. One of the downsides of one of the downsides of smuggle is that it replaces your card from the top of the deck, so it makes you move faster to milling out. Normally that isn't a real downside, but Nick going for this vigilance milling strategy might be able to close things out that way in an extended game against an opponent using lots of smuggle. There is only one card left in George's deck. He plays Inferno 4, and he can look at that card and put it on the top or the bottom, but either way, it's the same thing. If George doesn't have a restock, he's in trouble. Once you run out of cards in this game, you start taking 3 damage... Um, three damage for each card you would draw but couldn't. Okay, so he brings out um, he brings out the so this is the large uh, large ship unit first light. Um, I believe it has grit and it gives everything else on your side grit and damages a friendly unit when you play it. Hondo's ability used to buff the uh, vigilant pursuit craft and also being buffed by the also being buffed by the grit there. So this is actually this is actually rather threatening now for Nick. Although George is milling out, it will take several turns for him to actually die to the mill. Nick needs a blast, and he has it! Super laser blast, board wiped, and that is probably the game. George only has his cards in hand. 
Oh, he's going to mill his opponent too. Mill six. And heal five, I think. But the difference between this is uh, uh, between these players is that Nick has not been losing cards in deck to smuggle. And as a result of that, I think Nick is actually in a substantially better position to resist the mill. George is in big trouble here. Nick plays a death trooper that damages itself since George doesn't have a ground unit for it to damage. The question now is, does George have enough stuff between his... Uh, between his smuggle cards and his remaining cards in hand, can he put something together to close out this game? And I don't think it's going to be possible. I think we saw an Avenger in Nick's hand. Playing that Avenger would not only take out the Vigilant Pursuit Craft, um, it would develop a powerful unit for George to have to deal with while he's also mealing out. I think Nick has this game in the bag, but let's see how it goes. Yeah, there's that Avenger. The Pursuit Craft is done. And George, uh, George uses a make an opening to kill the Death Trooper and heal two. If Nick, uh, if George has a power of the dark side in hand still, he could he could use that to clear the Avenger. No, it looks like it's going to be a scoop. He does have the power of the dark side, but I guess he just didn't have any other way to actually win at this point. So I think it's going to be a scoop from George. Victory to Nick Hansen using Mill to counter the Smuggle from this Hondo deck. That's harsh. So. Mill, like I said earlier, so when you smuggle, you play a card from your resource zone, but you replace it with the top card of your deck. And it's important to note that replacement from the top card of your deck is mandatory. So every time that you smuggle, you are getting yourself closer to milling out. And Nick was able to, uh, even though he was at a disadvantage on the board, he was able to push that weakness in cards remaining in deck by using his copies of Vigilance to mill George. And while George had the advantage on board, he wasn't able to win the game before Nick could reset with a super laser blast. Then leaving George without further cards to draw, taking fatigue damage... And George was not able to close things out with the remaining cards in hand, plus the stuff that he had in Smuggle. So, or the the, re, the cards with Smuggle that he had in his resource zone, rather. So, tough outcome there. Let's see what George is going to put in for the uh, put in for the second match or the second game of this match, and see whether it's going to be enough to get him the win. One thing that I think George might have. So, if George is playing restock, that's an easy include here. If he has restock in this sideboard to counteract these milling tactics, I do think that this deck is unusually vulnerable to milling tactics. But I'm not sure that George has the restocks because, to be frank with you, these sorts of like vigilance mill strategies were on their way out uh at the end of the spark of rebellion meta like people were still playing vigilance but the days of the deck of the uh like control decks that were optimized against other hard control decks and were playing crazy amounts of cards specifically for the vigilance and restock interaction uh those days were over so you know at one time there were people playing like you know, uh, three copies of double out of aspect Spark of Rebellion and you play Spark of Rebellion for six, but it's worth it because it takes their vigilance and restock and those are the only important cards or whatever. Or like people were playing out of aspect Bounty Hunter crew in like Iden Double Blue or in like a blue green villain control and, you know, just to get back your vigilance or restock. And so that's a um, that's an interesting that was an interesting and kind of weird meta when people had these options to counter uh, the other control decks with this alternate game plan. But it had really receded uh, one and it had really receded pri even prior to the release of Shadows of the Galaxy. So I'm honestly not sure whether George even brought the restocks. They would have been considered a crucial card for for some of these sorts of things at one time. But um but I don't know if he's playing them. Another thing that he might be playing, though, would be Relentless. So one option against the Vigilance-type decks is to try to enter a Relentless lock. So Relentless disables the first event that your opponent would play each turn and can be very effective against a control deck that is, especially if you have a card advantage on them, suddenly to get to remove the Relentless, they likely, unless they can take it out with a Devastator or an Avenger or something, they likely have to waste an event doing nothing before they can play 
play the removal card that will actually stop the relentless and that that has been a fairly effective tactic against some of the some of the control type decks as well looks like george is keeping this hand while nick goes for the mulligan i think we did see one of the collection star hoppers getting resourced there for george so he has a solid turn two play either getting a three three in space or a two two in space that buffs whatever he played on turn one and because it is played via smuggle it also doesn't make him does not make him spend a card from hand and can potentially enable a stronger Lieutenant Childson play. So Lieutenant Childson, because he reveals up to four cards, is is best in a traditional deck if you skip either your turn one or turn two, uh, and therefore have four cards in hand in addition to Lieutenant Childson when you play him, and can give him the full plus four plus four. However, if you have Smuggle, and you can do that on turn two, or I guess turn one, but I don't know of a Smuggle card that would be real good to play on turn one. But if you have have a smuggle for your turn two play you don't have to skip a turn and you can still be setting up lieutenant childson which i think is quite interesting Now, of course, you can also play Lieutenant Childson without full value. And in fact, in our last game, we did see both players do that. We saw the Lieutenant Childson uh, playing with only three counters. Interestingly, George plays a, a uh, collection Starhopper from hand. I wonder if that was his only unit. I had thought he had resourced one to smuggle out, but it's... Uh... Oh, he did. <laughs> he had two. So there's the um, there's the collection star hopper buffing the one that's already in play, uh, and Doctor Pershing does one damage to himself to draw a card. George swings on in, doing three damage to base, I think, but I don't think they've added the counters yet. And then a Death Trooper enters play, interestingly doing damage to Doctor Pershing here. Um, instead of itself. So because Death Trooper only hits ground units, the damage to the opposing unit is wasted, and this Death Trooper is essentially a 3-cost three 3-3 three, three that hits his own side when played. Not very impressive, but probably better than playing nothing. And the card advantage from Dr. Pershing is still quite relevant for Nick, although George potentially has some card advantage himself in the form of all the smuggle cards that he's running. That, that collection Starhopper seems good in this matchup because it also provides you a nice uh, weak body that you don't mind losing to power the dark side. Ooh, nice. And then George is doing exactly the play that I was just discussing. Because his turn two play was a smuggle card, on turn three, he's able to play Lieutenant Childson, showing the full four blue cards for a 6-6 six, six Lieutenant Childson. Now, Nick could also get a 6-6 six, six Lieutenant Childson if he uses... Um, if he uses uh, Pershing to draw a card and, and make up for things that way, he goes for a takedown on the buffed consortium, star, uh, the buffed collection Starhopper. I get those that card mixed up with consortium Star Viper sometimes when I'm talking. The names are very similar. Similarly, the the system patrol craft and the valiant pursuit craft, or whatever whatever the exact name of that other one is. Um, next turn. Uh, there was two damage to uh, there was two damage to Nick's base from the, the collection Starhopper. Next turn, there's a Vanquish to get rid of Lieutenant Childson. There, Vanquish is a five cost defeat a non-leader unit. Timely intervention hits the field, smuggled out, smuggling out the client. We saw this play last game. And he's thinking about whether or not to do the shield. Like, what order does he want to do these? So, so he's gonna use the uh, use Hondo's ability to buff the client. So now, a uh, now a three six. Yeah, so he, he puts the shield on first this time and uses it to take out the Death Trooper without taking any damage. Now he has the 3-6 client still in play. Uh, Nick uses Pershing to draw a card, and the collection Starhopper swings in for two damage to base. Pershing is getting a lot of value here for Nick. I think this I think he's drawn three cards so far. Uh, now Director Krennic is going to deploy, and... Krennic uh, swings for the base, doing two damage, and with his restore two, getting uh, getting Nick closer to uh, a repaired base than he was earlier. So George has managed to do some good damage early on, but uh, Nick's uh, Nick's Krennic deployment and repair there is going to be a bit of an obstacle. Now George could deploy Hondo this turn, of course. We'll have to see how that goes. Client can swing for three here. 
Uh, client used to eliminate. Uh, client used to eliminate Doctor Pershing. I'm a little surprised, actually, that George didn't go for uh, getting rid of Pershing on the previous turn. Um, that card advantage seems more annoying to me than the three-three stat line on the Death Trooper, but I don't know. Nick thinking about what to do, and it's going to be another attack to the base with Director Krennic. So two more damage to George's base. And two healing from Nick's base, Krennic getting a lot of value. The collection Starhopper swings on in to deal that two damage right back, but Krennic is uh, Krennic is kind of holding back the tide here in terms of uh, damage to Nick's base. Only five damage on there right now. Having a leader with restore can be very handy. And Aiden Versio, the other uh, blue villain leader from our first set, Spark of Rebellion, doesn't have Restore, but she has an ability that can generate even, even more healing than Krennic can across the course of a game. Hondo deploys and swings to base for another four damage. Board, board state quite favoring George, but you got to be careful in this matchup because there is a risk of a super laser blast resetting the board. Nick doesn't have a card to play there. Interesting. We're up to seven resources. That means there could be a super laser blast next turn. I don't know for sure if there's one in hand for Nick. It looked to me like maybe there was. Yeah, there's. A, I think there's a super laser blast in hand for Nick. I think his plan must be trying to stall a bit until he can potentially do that. Nah, I don't know. He goes for a Vader, though. That's not a stalling type of play. George has a super laser blast of his own. Is he going to hit that Death Trooper again to allow Vader to kill? Uh... Wow. He actually misses completely. Vader not finding a single three cost or less villainy unit in the top 10 cards. That's brutal. Maul arrives, killing Krennic and dealing two damage to Hondo. Uh, Maul can choose to have a friendly underworld unit take the damage for him. And then that collection Starhopper getting yet more value, firing away at the base. We're up to 15 damage on Nick's base. Now, I think if Nick has that super laser blast, though, and I, I, I believe I saw one in hand, this could be the turn where he resets things. He would lose that Darth Vader of his own if he plays the super laser blast here, but like, yep, there we go. Super laser blast. He's fine with losing that Vader in exchange for taking out uh, Hondo, Maul, and the collection Starhopper that's been a thorn in his side for some time. But George still has all his resources and is going to be able to take this opportunity to play some cards. Um, it's going to be a Lieutenant Childson revealing four cards, including a Super Laser Blast of George's own. So that is going to be a 6-6 six, six copy of Lieutenant Childson on the field. And I think Nick has a power of the dark side, so George has better hope that he had at least one other unit to play in this situation. Maybe another collection Starhopper? Or just some small, like even a Pike Sentinel or something would be handy here. No, he doesn't have it. Ouch. So Nick is going to be able to use Power of the Dark Side to clear that 6-6 Lieutenant Childs in here, I believe. And that's exactly right. Power of the Dark Side comes out. George doesn't have a small unit to screen for him anymore, so he loses a powerful unit to Power of the Dark Side. Power of the Dark Side is a very powerful card for these blue villain uh, control decks. Um, it is a card that just says your opponent has to defeat a unit, and it doesn't even say non-leader. Uh, your opponent chooses and defeats a unit, and so the counter to it is having a small unit in play that you can afford to lose to it, um, in addition to whatever stronger thing that you have. But without a second card to play on the previous turn, George ended up losing his powerful 6-6 six, six Lieutenant Childs into that power of the dark side. The Daring Pursuit Craft, or Valiant Pursuit Craft, or whatever that card's called, hits the field, buffed by Hondo. Going to be a 4-6, but it eats a vig or it eats a Vanquish. Uh, Nick once again wiping the board. Oh man, and there in hand for Nick is the Bounty Hunter crew. Nick is playing some of that mill tech in his build, I think. He can use that Bounty Hunter crew to potentially get a Vigilance back and mill George extra. Um... 
Or he could use it, you know, he could get his super laser blast back if the situation becomes untenable. He could get a, a normal removal card back. George smuggles out a long pike using Hondo's ability to buff it. Very solid play. Oh, but there's an Avenger from Nick clearing Lom Pike. Once again, George is without a small unit to screen, but he does have Fell the Dragon to remove the Avenger immediately. Once again, the boards are cleared. George has a substantial advantage on damage dealt to the base. He's done 15 to Nick's damage while only taking 4 damage himself, but... We're moving towards a potential endgame where Nick might be able to get that meal going again. Inferno 4, there's a small unit. This is kind of one of the things that I think George was missing in some of the previous turns. He would really like to have a small unit to screen for something like Avenger or whatever if uh, Nick does bring out something that forces George to choose and discard. Avenger or Power of the Dark Side. Uh, Inferno 4 is a great asset to have there as it's a relatively easy unit to lose. And when you lose it, uh, you get to use that when played and when defeated ability to look at your top cards again. Uh, I think Nick maybe passed there, and now George is going to smuggle out another Lom Pike, bunk buffing it with uh, with uh, Hondo. Still has four resources left too. With four resources, he could you play a takedown or a fell the dragon. Fell the dragon would be able to take out most of the larger units that Nick would be able to play in this situation. So Nick has an Avenger in hand, but if he played it, George could just choose to lose his Inferno 4 and then play uh, Fell the Dragon to take out the uh, take out the Avenger. It's going to be Dooku hitting the field and killing Inferno 4. I think George maybe forgets Inferno 4's when defeated ability here, not entirely sure. In this situation, it might be a good idea to just play another small unit, but it's going to be the Fell the Dragon on Dooku. I don't know that that's I don't know that, that leaves him in the best spot. Nick is just going to take the initiative here, and now he can play his Avenger and clear Lon Pike. Lon Pike, Lon Pike. It's not looking great. Yep, there's the Avenger and uh, Lon Pike. Lon Pike off the board. Oh, but George responds with an Avenger of his own, wiping Nick's Avenger. Man, this is, this really is a war of the uh, war of the big units here. And I think Nick didn't have another play, so George also plays a Pike Sentinel. Now George's Avenger is protected from a potential power of the dark side. Nick really wants to have a super laser blast here, I think, to wipe the board completely. Let's see what happens. Only two swings from that Avenger would close out the game, so if Nick has an answer, he needs to have it fast, and there's the Super Laser Blast board wiped yet again, but George still has all his resources with which to play out some more units. There's the Pike Sentinel covering from a potential uh, Power of the Dark Side. There's Dr. Pershing on Nick's side of the board, but he's ambushed by Maul from George, removing him immediately before he has a chance to draw any cards, and two damage to Nick's base from Overwhelm. George has the advantage here. I have to say, they, they, these games have been going long, though. I think these players might be at risk of going to time. Um, looking at this, I've been, uh, I've been, I've been recording this for almost 40 minutes now. Time limit is, I think, 55 minutes. This game isn't over. And if George takes this, he currently looks favored. And if he takes this, they will not have a lot of time for game three, which is one of the downsides of playing some of these control type builds. Let's see how this goes. Nick Hansen throws out yet another super laser blast, wiping the board again. I think I has that been all three of those from Nick? George reviewing his resources, thinking about what his best plays are. The problem with these super laser blasts is because they cost eight. After you play them, the opponent often has a chance to play out some more units if you play a super laser blast earlier in the turn. Supreme Leader, Snoke, but with no cover. If there's a power of the dark side, Snoke is off the board, but there isn't. So Snoke is going to stick here for now at least, but I think Nick has a Devastator in hand that can clear Snoke. 
The question is what George has in return. If he has an Avenger or something of his own, it's unfortunate for George that he only had one card to play that turn. No, it's not Avenger. Uh, it's not gonna be the Devastator. It's gonna be a Rivals Fall. That's just defeat a unit for six. Nick playing both Vanquish and Rivals Fall. I, I actually think this milling strategy might be a key part of Nick's gameplay here. With the very large amount of removal that he's using, it's kind of odd to play both Vanquish and Rivals Fall. But I think that the 30 HP and the large amount of removal in top end makes me think he's playing a very late game oriented deck. Oh man, George plays the Lieutenant Ch Childson and gets uh, four experience. Nick plays the Lieutenant Childson and only gets one experience. Definitely some different value there for the uh, for the different moves. And then Lieutenant Childson ambushed by Maul. Three damage there and with Overwhelm, another four damage to Nick's base. Nick's base on critical HP here, only, uh, only nine... Only 9 HP remaining for Nick, but a takedown removes Maul. I think George is now going to take the initiative. If George just swings in here with Childs, then Nick's going to be left with only 3 HP. Yeah, swing for 6. Nick is in trouble here. But he has a good chance of being able to remove Childs in here. If he plays that Devastator that he has in hand, that, that would clear it. But George might have follow-up of his own. A war of the, uh, it is a war of the end game here, as both players are on a high amount of resources. Looks like there's four cards in hand for Nick. George has considerably more. I think the card advantage generated by Smuggle is paying off, but it might end up being his downfall also if he ends up getting milled out again. Devastator on the field clearing, uh, Devastator on the field clearing lieutenant childson does george have an easy answer yes he does power of the dark side removes devastator this time it's nick who's the one who might be lamenting not having a uh, not having a smaller unit to play first he then brings out a system patrol craft but if he had done that in the other order his system patrol craft could have absorbed that power of the dark side and saved his devastator and then the valiant uh the valiant pursuit craft or coming in and uh, getting a plus one, plus one as it was smuggled. And then George also smuggles out a collection star hopper, which gives him a buffer against an Avenger. Nick, meanwhile, has restock in hand and has the bounty hunter crew in hand. He's set up for this vigilance milling endgame, but that doesn't seem to be what George is going for. George isn't trying to mill Nick. George is just trying to win via damage, and he's very close to doing it. Bounty hunter crew... Bounty Hunter crew for 8 because it's out of aspect and Nick grabs a super laser blast. I think he's going to be he's going to be trying to reset the board again here. But George can potentially win this turn if Nick doesn't have more. No, wait a minute. I think Nick has I think Nick actually has 8 res I, has he actually resourced all the way to 16? I think he might actually be able to play the Super Laser Blast. Yeah, he still has 8 resources. He went all the way up to 16 resources. That means he's actually going to be able to fire off this Super Laser Blast to reset the board again. The... The System Patrol Craft taken out by George's stronger counterpart and the... Collection Starhopper now poised to hit the base for two, which would leave Nick at one. But if George smuggles out another unit, uh, yeah, it doesn't. Nick isn't even waiting for George to smuggle out another unit. He just fires off his he fires off his super laser blast that he just got back, and wipes the board yet again. Left on only three HP and completely out of resources against George, who hasn't played a single card this turn. George just needs to develop some units here. But does he have units to play? It looks like there's a lot of events in hand. I'm actually not sure if he has other units. What do we got? He plays a timely intervention. 
but and he's using the smuggled timely intervention to trigger hondo and give his client plus one plus one but it looks like he forgets shielded that client should have a shield i don't know that it actually matters in this matchup but that client should have a shield uh george 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 realizes it now and then nick has taken the initiative and then oh that is big that is big it is uh i believe that is first light So George now has two units threatening lethal. And I think it's a scoop for Nick. George has managed to get through all the removal cards and win game two. It is one and one, but they have just spent a long amount of time on these control mirrors in the first two games. I am not sure if they're going to be able to complete game three in time. And if they don't, this could end up being a double loss in Star Wars Unlimited TCG. Uh, draws are not permitted, and if it goes to time at 1-1 or 0-0, it is a double loss. Though, of course, either player could choose to concede. But it, there's, uh, there is not a lot of time. They probably have less than 20 minutes for this game, and their previous games took a substantial amount of time, so they're going to have to significantly increase the, the pace of play or come up with some brilliant wins in the early game or something, but otherwise, I think they're going to go to time. They probably only have about 15 minutes until time is called. It's an interesting situation. So looking at these decks, Nick has a um, Nick seems to have a strategy that is maybe more end game and more oriented towards that million game plan against other control decks. We saw him with the restock and with the bounty hunter crew cards that are being brought in to win the mill mirror. But George didn't seem to be going for the mill mirror. George just played a more unit based game plan and was able to get enough value and advantage to win. Let's see if he can do it this time. And yeah, that was a first light that we saw at the end there. Okay. It's George versus Nick versus the clock going into the third game of this match. There is a very real chance of a double loss. It says here that this is uh, round six semifinals, but I think there isn't a cut for this event. I think it's just uh, I think it's just seven rounds of Swiss, and so I don't think they're using uh, I don't think they're using the rules for time in the cut. I think this is just uh, just a Swiss round, even though it's listed as semifinals in the uh, in the interface in the bottom left there from Co Dameron. I think there's no cut for this event. Uh, okay, so once again, Dr. Pershing leading things off for Nick. Honestly, a pretty good start, and George is going to play Inferno 4. Looking at his top two cards, and it looks like both of those are things that he's going to send to the bottom of the deck. Let's see what happens next. Going into turn two. Pershing used to deal one damage to himself and draw a card. George is going to bring out a collection Starhopper. That's a play that we've seen several times this game. Hondo's ability now used, giving the plus one counter to Inferno 4. Inferno 4 now a 3-4. Ooh, a Black Sun Starfighter uh, hits the field. A 3-2 Sentinel in space. And George takes the initiative. I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised. I think that I likely would have just had my... I think I likely would have just had my Inferno 4 take out the Black Sun Starfighter with the experience. You can kill that unit and remain alive at 1 HP, so I'm not entirely sure why he didn't attack. I guess he... Okay, so it looks like he wanted to trade his his uh, consortium, his collection Starhopper into it instead. I'm not sure why. I don't think that's advantageous. Oh man, Nick playing a resupply here, ramping. Lom Pike played not from Smuggle this time. Nick still on one resource. And I think we could see Director Krennic deploying and starting to heal some of the damage that George did to Nick's base early on in this game. That resupply means Krennic can come out a turn early.
Nick, really vacillating here. This is a I I I think this is not the pace of play that's going to get them to a get them to close this out. He only has one resource. He's counting his resources. I guess he's he, he's thinking about whether to deploy Krennic maybe. He ends up doing it. He's going to deploy Krennic. And then he just swings base, heals two. So now actually having done more damage to George's base than he has on his own base, thanks to Krennic's Restore 2. George now up to five resources and Nick at six resources. George needs to get rid of Krennic, but he might not be able to do so immediately. Uh, Lon Pike is going to just remove Pershing here, uh, taking zero damage in re or taking one damage in return because Krennic's passive ability does give one power to the wounded Pershing. This does mean that Lon Pike is now in range of a potential takedown, but it's going to be a smuggled timely intervention, timely intervention into a, a uh, Lieutenant Childson, revealing three blue cards for five, five and taking four damage in return from Lon Pike. And the timely intervention was smuggled there, so it cost two plus the four resources for Lieutenant Childs, and that is the whole turn for Nick. But George left not in an amazing spot here. Uh, however, he still has he still has has yet to play a card himself. His uh, Inferno four swings in for three damage. Uh, Krennic does two and heals two. Another Long Pike this time smuggled, and it is going to be a uh, Hondo trigger. Um, Hondo trigger on uh, on Pike. I actually wonder if the Hondo trigger would be better there on Inferno 4. I don't know for sure. That uh that Lieutenant Childson's a 5-5. Five five. Swings in for more damage on George's base. Now it's Nick who's the aggressive one on base damage. Oh, Pike swings, giving himself a shield, defeating Childson, and giving a shield to Krennic. Another Pershing on the field. I think George is just fighting for board control now. The problem with it, with fighting for board control, though, is that you, it renders you potentially vulnerable to one of those super laser blasts. And Krennic just keeps healing. If he can figure out, if he can smuggle something out, he can buff Hondo, use Hondo to defeat Pershing, and then potentially play a Power of the Dark Side to kill Krennic. A Vanquish defeats Lom Pike. Hondo's on the field. Is there a cheap smuggle card? Let's see another collection star hopper smuggled above Hondo. That's exactly what we see here. And now we're going to be in a position where Hondo can kill Pershing and then George can play a power of the dark side to kill Krennic. Yep, Hondo kills Pershing. Initiative taken and there's the power of the dark side. Yeah, just as uh, just as I thought. <coughs> Well, uh, well done by George. He's gained control of the board after some tough plays from Nick. I do think there's a good chance that we are going to see a super laser blast to reset things here, but it will leave George with his resources totally. Uh, it would leave George with his resources totally unused and an opportunity to gain an advantage here. Super laser blast it is, as uh, as predicted. We've seen a lot of those from Nick this game. In fact, I think we saw for this match, I think we saw four of them in the previous match because I think not only did he play all three, he brought one of them back with that bounty hunter crew. But now George has the opportunity to play uh, play a bunch of cards with Nick having no resources. So even though George, uh, even though George's board just got reset by that super laser blast, he's going to be able to build up a new board for next turn. It's going to be the Pike Sentinel first. That gives him a smaller unit which it will allow anything larger that he plays to be protected from a power of the dark side or avenger since george can just choose the weaker unit to be removed and then it's another pike sentinel and it's a um what is that it's a ruthless assassin dealing two damage to one of the pike sentinels instead of to itself so ruthless assassin is a three three and um it has overwhelm and when played you deal two damage to a friendly unit and maybe a friendly ground unit but a friend it's either a friendly unit or a friendly ground unit 
And so two for a three three is good, but having to damage your own side is bad. If you play it on your uh, uh, by itself, it ends up being two for a three one. Um, Maul ambushes in, clearing the Pike Sentinel uh, and taking um, taking two damage, but putting six damage on the board from Overwhelm. George has taken substantial damage on base this time. Three damage to base from the uh, Ruthless Assassin here. Two damage to base from the Pike Sentinel. Maul! George ambushes Nick's Maul with a Maul of his own and redirects the damage on uh, onto the Ruthless Assassin, leaving George's Maul still on the field and covered by that Pike Sentinel. So Avenger or Power of the Dark Side won't work against George here. Nick does have another Super Laser Blast, though. Let's see if he goes for the big reset. The problem is, once again, it would leave George with the opportunity to play several more units. No, it's going to be Rival's Fall this time, picking off Maul. Uh, two damage to base from the Pike Sentinel. Uh, only 15 HP remaining for Nick and 12 remaining for George. This game has had more damage on base. Maybe the players are going for more aggressive strategies, given the time constraints. And we do see the collection Starhopper... Um, Hondo's ability used on the Starhopper itself, so a 3-3 in space. And these smuggles are giving George some nice card advantage. And then we see Long Pike as well. Once again, George with a big board advantage. I think I think there's a good chance Nick opens this turn with another super laser blast, try to reset. Exactly right. Super Laser Blast wipes the board. Let's see if George has some uh, some units to rebuild with. And there's the client. George maybe forgetting the shield on the client here. Vigilant Pursuit Craft is going to give the... Um, is going to be played here, smuggled out, and Hondo's ability used on the Pursuit Craft itself. So, you know, once again, Nick resets the board only for George to repopulate it. Nick is uh, Nick is on the back foot here. Let's see what he can do to turn things around. Now, he could play... He has some of the big battleships here. We could see the Avenger, but I think there's a power of the dark side in George's hand. Looking at the hand cam there for a moment, George is, uh, you know, shuffling through his cards pretty fast, but I do think there is a power of the dark side there. Avenger hits the field. Uh, Avenger played and George opts to lose his, uh, opts to lose his copy of the client rather than the buffed, uh, the buffed space sentinel. It brings out a child sin and there's the power of the dark side showing it with child sin. And then he plays the power of the dark side, clearing that Avenger now with a sick, with a strong sentinel in both ground and space. George is in a strong position. And then George <laughs> George plays a timely intervention and doesn't have anything to play with it, but just plays it uh, from smuggle to engage uh, plays it from smuggle to engage Hondo's ability and give a plus one plus one counter. George has been playing uh, George has been playing pretty well and pretty fast here and I think he has the advantage in this scenario but we're going to see what happens as we continue they are low on time there is the devastator clearing lieutenant childson and it is a sentinel george needs to have something to remove that devastator if he wants to keep his uh ship engaging no no so he tries to attack the base but nick points out that uh devastator is a sentinel Wow. George insists, Nick insists that George take that attack into the Devastator. I think that, I think a bit, uh, there is another power of the dark side to clear it. I think that's a, um, 
I think that is not what I would consider the height of sportsmanship, but George did declare the attack. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, perhaps rules as written, Nick is allowed to enforce the J- George make the attack. I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. I don't know if we have like a formal floor rules for things like that. Um, a bit unfortunate because I think, I do think George, well, anyway, I think we, I think we might see a different outcome to that interaction without time constraints, but given that we do have time constraints, let's see how this goes. What is that? That it's another system patrol craft. We can see a swing here for Lieutenant Childson doing potentially uh, 8 damage because it is buffed by that overwhelming barrage that removed the Pike Sentinel. Uh, 8 damage isn't lethal, though. Covert Strength smuggled. It's going to heal, and it's going to give another plus 1 from Hondo's ability. Shield and heal, though, so now Nick isn't going to die. That that attack did 10 damage. Oh, he would have lived on 1 HP anyway, though. That attack did 10 damage. Nick has only 6 HP remaining. Another attack from Childson is legal. So I actually don't know... I actually don't know if you are forced to take an attack that is, that is illegal. I don't know if you're forced to attack into the Sentinel like that. Nick plays an Avenger, resetting uh, resetting the board by removing Childson, but then George clears uh, Nick's board with a Super Laser Blast. Nick takes initiative, George passes. So Nick did not have another unit to bring out after the Super Laser Blast, and we're at a we're at a reset board here. I think it's almost certainly that this game is certain that this game is going to go to time. Heal, heal and mill. Vigilance coming out. Let's see here. Okay, so we see the Ruthless Assassin. The Ruthless Assassin is going to be ambushed by Vader here, I think. But if Nick can pull a Death Trooper, he can kill the Ruthless Assassin without taking any damage. Um, He doesn't, but he does get a uh, 3-2 Space Sentinel on the field. I think time was called. So they have one more action phase. This game almost certainly will have an inconclusive result, and the question is going to be whether either player will concede. Because I think neither player is going to be able to win. So Nick is going to be able to do eight more damage in the next action phase. No, he's not, because there's a super laser blast and it resets the board. Okay. Well, we're going into the last turn here. This is the last action phase of the game. Neither player can possibly win. uh, And it's going to be the question is whether... Either player is going to scoop, I think. If not, it's going to be a double loss. Okay, so Nick... uh, Nick just immediately passes. George claims, and that's the end of the game. There's a handshake. I don't know if... I don't know if either player scooped there or if that was just like, hey, it's a double loss. If neither player conceded, this is a double loss. I, be- I believe it is a double loss. Okay, so that's a, a, a weird situation. Um, I think George, uh, you know, George was playing fast. Um, yeah, so I think let's let's go back a bit. I think I think the key situation there was, yeah. So I think I'm trying to find the devastator play. 
not immediately seeing it, just searching back. But I think the um, I think the key play was that interaction where. I think the I, so okay so I think the key play here was this situation where the pursuit craft tried to attack the base but had to hit devastator instead um I don't actually know what the correct way to resolve that is uh you know by the formal rules or similar I think that informally uh informally I think that Informally, I think that it would be sportsmanlike to allow uh, to allow George to not attack in that scenario. I don't know what the formal rules say about whether you declare an attack with a legal with an illegal target, but it seems like they resolved it as George being forced to attack into the Devastator, which was very negative for him because he could just remove it with Power of the Dark Side, um, and that meant that his unit was dead for future turns and that he didn't get damage that he could have gotten that turn. I think it may have been an error due to play speed with things going there, but uh, unfortunate situation, uh, unfortunate situation for sure. And ultimately, this uh, ultimately this match illustrates, I think, some kind of some of the perils of these slower control strategies. If you do end up against another control deck, there is a risk that you will not be able to finish game three if the first two games go long. The players were going pretty fast in that third round. They were, you know, they were pushing to try and uh, pushing to try and get things done quickly, but unfortunately, it did not end up with a conclusive result. And I think if neither player con uh, conceded, it was a double loss in the end. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks again for Co to Co Dameron for providing this footage, and we'll be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited content. I will catch you guys later.